Well, good morning. I uh, was unaware that uh, John and Stacy and Jeremy would be back today. But even beforehand, I had already prepared uh, a comment that uh, after this morning's uh, lesson uh, being the second in a row that I've given, that it, uh, you all will be ready for John to come back. Um, but he, uh, and then when I saw he was here, I thought, uh-oh, uh, uh, now I've got to be on my toes. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to set up uh, visuals without John's help. So this is going to be an old-fashioned sermon. And Larry was kind enough to agree that when he's had to preach, he's had to go old-fashioned to old school, I think was the term. And uh, I said, well, I'm not ashamed to say uh, you know, I do things old school. And he agreed. Now, uh, I'm sure that uh, John and Laura at home and, and my other children would, would disagree with that, uh, being in old school as being uh, better at times. Uh, well, we just finished a holiday, Thanksgiving, and uh, I don't know, it was a weird Thanksgiving for many of us, wasn't it? Um, for, uh, Lynn and I were fortunately able to have Thanksgiving over at John and Laura's, but my other children were, were unable to attend uh, because of the virus. Uh, and I haven't uh, had a chance to see my son and his beautiful wife and my three oldest grandchildren in New York for months. And it will be months before we get to see each other in person again. Uh, so Thanksgiving, however, was a, a good day. And I think it's good to have a national holiday to remind us, uh, not only of our history, but of the, uh, a reminder that we should be thankful. And this passage in Colossians that, uh, that uh, Paul writes, I think, is a, a beautiful passage summing up the fact that we, we have been given peace in Christ. And uh, for that, we should be living uh, daily lives of thanksgiving, not just once a year. And that uh, uh, the word thanksgiving uh, actually is, it comes from the Greek word eucharisto. Or, or, which is the verb, Eucharistia is the noun. And so when we celebrate the Eucharist, we are celebrating the thanksgiving of the death and the resurrection of Jesus for us. So Eucharist is a very biblical word, but it's used far more broadly to refer to uh, thanks, uh, thanksgiving, and I like the word gratitude. To me, the word gratitude really, for some reason, hits me more than thanks or thanksgiving. And so, because we have the peace of Christ within us, we are able to live lives of gratitude. Now, that word peace is another word that I think sometimes we need to broaden a little bit. Peace is not merely the absence of conflict or war. Of course, the way it's being used here. Peace in Christ refers to, the word I would use is contentment. That we have an inner contentment because of Christ that lives in us every day. And I know when I think about being content uh, as being the peace of Christ, you know, that just has an all, an allness to it. Contentment to me means that you're feeling good all over, not just being at peace from quarrels and fights and conflicts. Contentment can be, uh, well, years ago when I was in Europe and I was in Italy, I remember my wife and I going to a, an Italian restaurant in Rome, and we'd been, war we'd been told in advance that this could happen. Somebody suggested, okay, when you sit down, just observe other patrons, Italians, eating. And one of the things you will probably see, and we did, is when they get their food, they don't just start digging in. A lot of times they will look at it and just admire it. And every bite they just admire. And I thought at the time, that is the way we should enjoy our food and every other blessing that we have. Admire the things 
show gratitude for the things, even the little things. Now, I don't know about you, but I love food. So for me, food is not a little thing. But uh, beyond that, uh, we should find the, the contentment, the gratitude in everything around us that we can. And uh, in doing so, it means we, we really, one of the things I learned a long time ago, it, it came to me at some point, that, you know, and I think I, it was from something C.S. Lewis wrote, you know, in his book, Surprised by Joy, uh, which actually describes his conversion. But one of the points he makes is that uh, we find joy not when we're pursuing joy itself, but in the other things that suddenly we experience joy from, unexpectedly at times. And the, the, uh, the peace and the, and the joy and the gratitude should be found in even the little things. I mean, we, we can tick off a lot of things that we're grateful for. We're grateful for family. We're grateful for our jobs. We're grateful for the homes we live in. And every winter, I really think about that. Um, my ancestors uh, lived in, the, uh, in Kansas, and, uh, you know, they, like the people in Nebraska back then, can you imagine in January uh, staying warm in your homes? They didn't have central air, air conditioning or heat. They had a fireplace. That was it. Or uh, riding to the, you know, going to the grocery store of their time. You had to get on a horse or in a carriage. And I think about that when I'm driving up to Omaha and it's 10 degrees. And I click on my heater and, hey, it's 75 degrees in my cabin. Well, when you were riding to the store back in 1880, it wasn't 70 degrees. You were bundled up, and that's all the warmth you had. So there's so much that we can be thankful for if, if we just think about where we are now. We have food available. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, every year making sure we have enough crops, that, and then we can everything to make sure we can get through the winter and the early spring without worrying about eating. My father grew up in southern Kansas during the Depression, and he told me a story during the Depression, which was, I, I remember asking him, what, was, what, what are some of your, your tough memories? And he said, well, the hardest thing I remember was one evening my mother was, was trying to make dinner, but she didn't have anything. And it was one of the few times he said he saw his mother crying because I don't have food for my children. And my grandfather came home, and, and he somehow was able to go and find some potatoes to bring home. And that's what they had, potatoes, for supper. But my dad remembered how hard it was, not, not only not having that much to eat, but also seeing the impact on his parents. So to say the least, he and others of the Depression who suffered like that, to this day, they're gra grateful for a lot of the little things that we just take for granted. But what Paul is saying is if, if you have the peace of Christ, if you have the contentment of Christ, you need to, be, you need to strive to have the gratitude for all the things that we have. And one of the things I have, again, I, I learned years ago uh, when I was at uh, University of Iowa and going through the, the rigors of the Ph.D. program there, um, I learned that, you know, maybe C.S. Lewis is right. Maybe I should really try to look at the smaller things and be grateful. And when you take a walk, that's something that we, you know, studies have shown recently that uh, taking a walk or being outside actually gives you endomorphins, just breathing in the air from the, the leaves of the trees and the, and the greenery actually helps you physically feel better. 
So uh, getting outside is something that's very simple, but if you really let it, it can give you a great feeling of contentment to be thankful for. And, and one of the things I had to tell my wife years ago, we would go out on a walk regularly, and she would tend to walk with her head down. And after a while, I would say, uh, okay, Lynn, put, raise your head. Look around. Look at the little things around you and enjoy them. And some of you know I, I still like to run outside and walk. And I don't run as fast as I did 50 years ago, much to my dismay. But one of the things I think I've always enjoyed about running is enjoying the scenery, enjoying the architecture. Now, Nebraska City, you know, one of the reasons we moved down here is because of the historic homes down here and the beautiful trees. I'm a tree lover, and I grew up with that, and I've learned to appreciate that. And when I'm driving, I try, if I'm driving up to Omaha, I always try to look out and enjoy, although safely, enjoy the scenery around. That gives me something to be thankful for. It helps my spirit. It helps give me the peace. And Paul is calling on us to enjoy the contentment that Christ gives, not only in the big things, but in the little things. And the challenge I think that many of us have is how do we find the joy, the gratitude, when the tough times come? And for many of us, we're experiencing some tough times right now. Uh, many of us in this church have been fighting the virus. I have family who have been fighting the virus. One of my, my cousin's wife is in the hospital right now with the virus. I think she's going to be okay, but, uh, you know, it's, it's something that uh, many people are worried about. We, you know, we have 27 people here today. Uh, we are a fraction of, of the body we normally have because many people are, are trying to be safe and uh, are, are distancing, and they're having to put up with me over the a video. But uh, how, do we, how do we get through the tough times with an attitude of gratitude? And that is always the toughest things. How many of you have gone through some, some times where you got pretty down, pretty depressed? Okay. Some of you are courageous enough to raise your hands, but I'm sure that's true of all of us. Okay. And frankly, when you're during, going through those down times, it's hard to have gratitude, isn't it? It's hard to say, thank you, God, I'm feeling miserable. Okay. Or thank you, God, uh, my loved one is, is hurting. Or thank you, God, I just lost my job. So how do you approach those situations with the heart of thanksgiving? And one of the things that, uh, again, is sometimes you know, when Paul was writing this letter, he was in prison. So when he's encouraging us to be thankful, this is a man who is in a situation, I've, I've never been in prison, I have no intention of ever being in prison, because that would just drive me nuts. As John and I were talking, uh, being confined, the worst part is not being able to get out and do things. Uh, I'm not built that way. I'm, I'm thankful all my careers I never had a desk job. It would have driven me nuts. And to be in prison, uh, I just can't imagine. But Paul is writing, you know, enjoy the peace, the thanksgiving of Christ. And he's writing as he is in prison. So how could he do that? How could he suggest that? Well, one of the ways when you're going through tough times is to realize that 
it's during those times that we experience it probably the most, the strength and power of Christ within us. One of my favorite verses in the entire Bible is Philippians 4.13, where, again, in prison, Paul writes, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And I can't tell you how many times when I've had struggles in my life that that verse has meant so much. I can get through this. This is not going to be permanent. God will give me strength to get through this difficulty, this depression, this hardship, this suffering. God can do this. So for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful, God, that this is not an easy time. It's not a fun time. But I'm thankful that you're giving me the strength to, to emerge eventually from this and to keep my attitude as positive as I can. Now, I'm not a naive, positive person. I like to describe myself as a realistic optimist. Okay? And that is that you, you try to be positive even when you recognize it's not a good time. And when you're going through those tough times, the other thing that I learned as I grew up well, sometimes I'm grateful for the fact that I know, based on previous moments of suffering and difficulty, I know that I'm going to learn something from this. How many of you can think right now of things in the past that were tough times, or even times where you were not doing the right thing and brought you misery, and you can look back on it and say, no, I'm, I'm sorry that happened, or I'm sorry I did that, but I learned something for today. And much of life is like that. Even when I was a student at York College, I remember having to take an art and music history class. And of all my freshman classes, oh, this is so worthless. I mean, what in the world? I mean, oh, yeah, I like music, but no, not all this art stuff. You know, the famous Greek and Roman architecture and all these cathedrals back in Europe and all that. And I thought, I'm never going to use this. But little did I know that four years later I would be in Europe. And I would go into these cathedrals and I would see this art and I would tell myself, boy, I'm glad I learned about this. Sometimes the things that we go through that aren't enjoyable, later on we learn lessons, we learn things that will be of great value in the future. Likely, uh, the fact that I grew up in a very dysfunctional family, a rough family. Little did I know at the time that my last career, I'd be working as a speech-language pathologist up in Omaha Public Schools with all the alternative behavior programs. I, went, I, I went, went to nine different buildings, including the Douglas County Youth Center, and I worked with the roughest, toughest kids in Omaha. But you know what? Because I grew up in that dysfunctional family, I understood them. I understood what it was like to have a parent who was an alcoholic. I understood what it was like to have a parent who had mental illness. I understand, understood what it was like to have siblings who got drunk and got into drugs and got pregnant as a teenager. I could relate because of the difficult, bad times I grew up in. And I was grateful, and I, to this day I am grateful. I have, I think the empathy that people have credited me with is due to that. Unfortunately, at times at work, uh, people would come to me with their problems without me asking for them to come to me. There was something about me that they could relate to. I don't know where that came from. I think it came from my background. And, and Christ working in me. 
And so even though I did not enjoy growing up in my family, for the most part, I tried to escape it as much as I could, I'm grateful because it helped me become a better servant to others. Did I know that at the time? No. When I was growing up, if you told me I was going to be a minister and a teacher, I would have said, you're absolutely crazy. But look what happened. God has ways, even in the tough times, to develop us, to be servants for Him. In another passage in Philippians chapter 4, I'll have to take my glasses off to read it. 4, verses 4 through 7, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious, that is, don't worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God is truly with us. And we can be thankful that we have each other as Christians. How many times have you been down and a, a brother or sister has said that encouraging word that helped you? One of the few first funerals I did, I was a minister in San Francisco, and a family lost their father. And after the sermon, uh, one of the daughters, I, I gave her a big hug. And she stepped back and she said, you don't know how much I, I needed just that strength and, and your presence. And I realized more than anything I had said in the funeral, it was that pre the fact that uh, I and others were there for her as Christians. That's what meant the most. And I learned from that that over the years when I was dealing with people grieving, that sometimes being there and encouraging is more important than anything you say. Sometimes it's better than anything you might say. And so Paul tells us to encourage one another, to be there for each other. When we sing, the context of singing to one another, he says. Sometimes we think we're just singing to God. No, no, we're singing for and to each other so that we might be thankful and encourage and build each other up. That's how in good times and in bad times, we can be thankful to God. And because we're thankful to God, we can be thankful and show thanksgiving and gratitude in the service we do for each other and for others in the world, including sharing the gospel of Christ. And so, as Paul says, let's show gratitude in all things. That's not a commandment. That's an encouragement. Because Paul knew from his own experience there are times in which you can't feel gratitude. But even in those times, eventually you will. And Jesus... In the Eucharist reminds us that that is we participate in thankfulness when we participate in the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, the communion, because it reminds us that Jesus' death and his resurrection provides the hope. And because of that hope, we can feel grateful to God for all that he has done. Shall we stand and sing?